viktigt alla små detaljer är för att göra rätt alltså. Här kommer han igen då anser Kopit här. Härlig pass till Gren, Hilversson och så Gasper Kopitar! Vilket samarbete! Anse till Alexander, till Gasper! Och det är 2-0 Bora! Jag tror att jag var kanske glad med honom. Det är bara kul att se hur han har utvecklats från en ung buck. Och hur jag... I guess watch him at the same time and uh, you know see him play in LA and a little bit in, in Portland and Des Moines and you know now here I think he's come a long way. How did you end up right-handed and Andre left-handed? I have no clue. Uh, it, uh, ever uh, ever since uh, I started playing my dad was a left-handed, he was left-handed and they gave me a left-handed stick and I always turned it to my right so that's how they knew I was a righty. After that 2012 Cup win another lockout but the silver lining for you is that you got to play in Sweden with your brother. Was it always a goal for you guys to be able to play together? Yeah, like I said before, he was just, you know, that much younger than me that we couldn't, we couldn't get together in Pee-wee's or, you know, so, so it was, uh, at that point, that was my one and only goal to, mm -hmm. you know, to get their experience because I didn't know if that, I mean, we played together in the, in the national uh, national team, but mm -hmm. it's it's really not the same thing. So, uh, you know, to go up to Mora, Sweden was it was really fun, and you know, to play with him was was extra special. And speaking of that national team, your family was very involved in the 2014 Olympics, the first time you guys have ever qualified. Again, you were in season with the Kings. So, how did you find out, and where were you? I knew the the team was going to Denmark, and and that was the the tournament. You know, it was four teams, round robin, top top team goes, and uh, I think that was the first game the guys played against Belarus, which is obviously a very tough opponent, and and they beat them. And then, um, and I remember I didn't watch any of it because I usually usually when I I watch the World Championships or anything. Uh, they always lost, so I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Yeah, I didn't want to <laughs> know, and I didn't want to know until after. I mean, obviously, I knew that you know they won the game, mm -hmm. but the second one was against Denmark, and that was the big one. So did not touch my phone, did not check any Twitter or anything uh, until until I got a text message from uh, from my mom saying that they won again, and then I you know, checked everything out and called my dad right after and congratulated him. And you guys ended up doing very well, making it to the quarterfinals in Sochi. What was the highlight for you of that experience and to be able to share it with your dad? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, for me going there, you know, I, I don't know if we're ever going to make it again or not. So I, I wanted to enjoy it as much as, as much as I could. And, and I certainly did that. And I think that that went, uh, together with with all the guys, because you know nobody from our team. We don't know if we're going to qualify again or not. We certainly hope so, and we believe we can. But you don't know if it's going to happen or not. So I think everybody went uh, went there really relaxed and just ready to play, and you know do whatever you can to win the game. And uh, obviously, the one game on the calendar was Slovakia that we kind of circled that maybe we can maybe surprise them and get a point out of it or, or just something to you know to really put our country uh, on the somewhat of a hockey map and mm -hmm. uh, we ended up beating those guys which was a big stepping stone for I think for the the hockey of Slovenia. Now do you take pride you and your family for what you've done for hockey in Slovenia? Yeah I mean there's you know there's only so much you can do because a, a lot involves the economics and obviously the the pay grade because everything falls back on on the parents and uh, as we know hockey is not a very cheap sport so uh, you know to to bring a guy or you know a kid through the system like that it, it can't it can be very tough for families so you know I've been doing and I'm gonna try and help out this as much as I can and uh, we'll see how we can progress with that and all around family is your family has grown in the past couple of years. A wife, a beautiful daughter. How has that changed you? Um, I don't think it changed me a whole lot. Uh, certainly the lifestyle changes just a little bit, obviously, because mm -hmm. not everything is involving just the two of us. It's, uh, you know, she's obviously 
the number one priority right now. So mm -hmm. everything involves around Nisha and uh, no, we're enjoying, we're enjoying life as parents for sure. And how long till you're like your dad, coaching your daughter out on the ice? Uh, she, I'm going to teach her how to skate. She is not going to play hockey. Oh, ho, ho, ho. all right. Okay. <laughs> daughter will not be playing hockey. Well, since we're <laughs> yeah, you wish that. Now yeah, she's right. going to do everything yeah, right. in her power to go and play 100%. hockey. <laughs>
you know, we got everything that we need in the locker room. If mm -hmm. we could overcome that, we could definitely go all the way again. They got to it. Right side. Picked up by the Kings. In deep. Here's Williams. Pass in front. Oh! Score! Right in front. A beautiful pass to Kopitar. And the Kings have the lead at 2-1. to one. And that is the end of the game and the end of this series. And the Kings climb to the top of this mountain is complete. The Sharks are eliminated after leading three games to none. And it seemed like you guys were battling back from a deficit that entire cup run. What made your team so resilient? We just took it one game at a time, really. I mean, up three, down three, it, it didn't matter. Uh, we just played our game. And we knew if we execute to a level that we can execute, there's a good chance of us winning. And, uh, you know, that year that playoff turned out well for us. Kopitar, Brownie, you and the boys have won a championship ring in 2012 and 2014. Which one's your favorite ring? The next, the next one. one. You're the first Slovenian NHL player, the first Slovenian to win a Stanley Cup. What are you doing now to make sure that there's many more after you? Well, just try to grow the game as much as I can, really. It's, it's only so much you can do, really. I'm, I've been trying to help as, you know, just as much as I can, try to spread it. But hopefully the, you know, more and more kids are going to pick up hockey sticks instead of, I don't know, soccer ball or basketball. And so the, the game grows and we got a few more out of Slovenia.